So I'm in the studio this morning with Mark andre Hamlin, who's in town to perform the Mozart Piano Concerto Number no. 17 with the Manitoba Chamber Orchestra. Good morning, Mark. Good morning. Thank you for being in this morning. I appreciate you taking the time, the extra time this morning. Of course. Because I know you've got a very busy schedule. We'll have you off on your way very shortly. But again, thank you for being here. Sure. Let me, uh, let me before we get into talking about uh, your new recording as well as why you're here uh, in, in Winnipeg to perform, I wanted to ask you briefly just about some of the music you heard growing up that may have influenced you in, in, in the way you approach music, the way you hear music, and the things that excited you when you were growing up? Well, even before I started piano lessons and, uh, you know, uh, my father was a very good amateur pianist and I think that he wanted his children, uh, one of his children to succeed uh, in what he wasn't really able to accomplish professionally. Um, my earliest exposure to classical music, you know, was way before I even started lessons and way before maybe he even thought of, uh, of uh, giving me piano lessons or, or getting me started on piano lessons. I remember Tchaikovsky ballet music and symphonies uh, playing around the house. I mean, he particularly liked that. And, uh, and besides the usual children's records, uh, we heard, uh, I mean, Peter and the, I knew Peter and the Wolf and the mm-hmm. Colonel of the Animals and uh, even piano recordings like uh, like the uh, Chopin etudes played by Cortot I mean, uh, and my dad was particularly fond of that um, but uh, and and later on you know I was uh, because of my dad I was exposed to the standard repertoire rather early but because I was always very curious as soon as I got the opportunity to look for something else, I branched out and went a little wild. Uh, and when was that? Well, uh, in my early teens, I guess, or mid-teens, I started buying records with whatever pocket money I had, you know, little budget records. Mm-hmm. Um, I looked for uh, out-of-the-way avant-garde music, and like Stockhausen, you know, and, uh, and just lapped it all up. Was it always classical music? Uh, at the time, yes, because I... Um, I, I really had a lot of resistance to almost anything popular. I mean, that when my sister discovered disco, it was like the Antichrist. <laughs> <laughs> and I was really quite upset. And t- today, I find it very amusing, <laughs> as I do a lot of other pop music. Mm-hmm. I, I'm much more open to it now, needless to say. I mean, I think anything that, that shows a little imagination, I'm always open to, which, which in my book excludes hip-hop, rap, reggae, and country, and whatever, you know? Other than that, fine. <laughs> <laughs> I have holes in my popular culture that you could drive a truck through, you know. But mm-hmm. uh, I, I try to polyfilla these holes, you know, as much as I can. Well, there's only so much room, I think. There's only so much room in one's uh, repertoire, I suppose, that especially when you yeah. spend so much time on a specific genre of music, yeah. really. I mean, I, mean well, I, I meet people occasionally whose, whose knowledge is really awe-inspiring, and they, they, it just seems like they've sampled everything. But I, I, do, I do what I can, of course. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I absorb as much as I can. Are these DJs you meet or musicians that have musicians that sort of... And, and yeah, music yeah. lovers, what? even, uh, who, who don't necessarily play, play an instrument, but are just avid music lovers. There That's me. Know. That's me. See, I'm <laughs> waving my hand over here. <laughs> Camera's working. <laughs> well, in your field, of course, you, you, you certainly yes. have to be uh, curious about them. Uh, many kinds of music. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So let's talk about your brand new recording coming out on, mm-hmm. uh, on Hyperion uh, next month. Yes. It features uh, Janacek and it also features Schumann. Now it's a pairing that is not usual. And um, how, how did Hyperion respond when you, when you came to them about that pairing? Well, uh, the original intention was to make two separate recordings, one solo Janacek and one solo Schumann. I'd already done two solo Schumann discs for them as well as uh, the Schumann Quintet with the Takach Quartet. Uh, and uh, I had uh, left over, you know, the Kinzersenen and the Waltzenen that I still wanted to record, but uh, there was no other Schumann that I was really particularly desirous to include. Uh, and at the same time, I'd always wanted to, um, to put Janacek's piano music on disc, and especially the overgrown path pieces, which are on this uh, CD. Uh, so I came to a to a solution. I thought, I thought of co- combining the two would, wouldn't be such a bad idea. Of course, they're all miniatures and they really focus around you know, storytelling with more or less evocative titles. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
Uh, and uh, Hyperion at first didn't quite see the potential for an idea like this, but but they they actually came back to me and s said we thought we we now think it's a good idea. Let's do it. So I I, I couldn't have been happier, and and the result is. Uh, um, I th I think it's already borne fruit because. I mean, I, I don't like to tune by Orrin Horn. I, I usually like to uh, <laughs> let other people well, say this, but it, the... Um, I can mention it. Okay, go ahead. Uh, that one, you I, don't I have feel to. better about that. <laughs> First time ever uh, where it's been nominated for Gramophone Music Magazine uh, CD of the Month and BBC Music Magazine CD of the Month at the same time. Yeah, I've, I've gotten that's both fantastic. Six distinctions, but never for Each the same Each yeah. So that's, uh, it, it's a tremendous boost. For that's, me, yeah, that's amazing. So, I mean, when it comes out in June, I think it's going to be a huge seller. It's that going to be great, and people are going wonderful. to enjoy it. Um, Mozart, you're in town to perform Mozart, and uh, it's a piece that you've recorded before many, mm. many years ago. Oh, yes. Uh, we won't say how many years ago, but not this, not in the last decade anyway. Right. How about that? And uh, give, give uh, our audience an idea tonight, if they come see the show, what to expect from the Mozart piece. Well, it's a delightful piece from start to finish. I mean, it's... Uh Saying that it, it has great melodic material, uh, in the case of Mozart, is stating mm. the obvious, of mm -hmm. course. But uh, it is one of the most perfectly proportioned works you could possibly imagine in every one of its aspects. And um, it, it's, it's just really, really delightful from start to finish. There you go. And one doesn't feel like it, it, anything could be added or subtracted, you know, without just sort of destroying the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Well, we uh, look forward to that tonight. I'm looking forward to seeing it. I will be there. So thank you, Mark, for coming in this morning, taking the time in your, uh, in your schedule, fitting us in. And uh, you're welcome back anytime, of <laughs> course, to, the, uh, to our studios here at Classic 107. And have, I will come. <laughs> and have a lots of fun tonight. Thank you so much.